We have every reason to rejoice today because it is Easter, the greatest Christian celebration. Easter brought back the hope of Christians right from the beginning. Though it has been a very terrible year for everybody in Nigeria, especially the Christians who have been the greatest target of attack. But we still have a consolation, which is Easter. And that is why the theme of our message this season is thank God for Easter. Thank God for Easter. The greatest consolation we have as Christians is Easter. Because the first Easter took place, we have a living hope. A hope that can never be dashed. No matter what happens to us here, we know it is just for a while we will enter our rest. No matter how they preach us, no matter what we have been passing through, no matter the persecution, no matter the trials, no matter the heartbreakings, no matter the denials, no matter the exclusion from the leadership and the wealth of this nation that Christians in Nigeria have been experiencing, it is not really what we think about as Christians. The issue is that we are going to rise with Christ and very, very soon we will forget whatever that has happened to us in Nigeria if we hold to our faith. So it doesn't matter what we experience today. They've decided to kill us by various means. But the Lord our God is alive and is watching. We may die by sword. We may die by gunshot. We may die by fire. We may die by bomb. We may die by gassing. We may die by strangling. We may even die by poisoning, by beating. We may die by heartbreaking for the things we see happening to our fellow Christians in this country. How they are slaughtered like animals. Look at what has been happening at Kaduna. Look at what has been happening in Taraba. Look at what has been happening in Niger State. Christians are being killed everywhere. And not to talk of even in Hamuf here. Since the beginning of the year, we've been suffering the hands of un unidentified invaders in our localities. 14 villages have been driven away and taken over by Fulanese. We now have eternally displaced people in Ihamufu. They have no access to their farms. They have no access to their homes. They have no access to their barns. And they are hungry. And we have been struggling to feed them. They have burned down our churches. They have burned down our vicarages. They have burned down our homes. Here in Enugu State. And they are not being disturbed by anybody. They do it and have their way. They've taken our places. They are living in our houses. And nobody is talking to them. But we know that God is watching. So no matter how they kill us, whether we die by diseases or by sicknesses, whether they drown us in the water, whether they stab us, whether they club us to death, whether they kidnap us and starve us to death, we die young, 
or old. It does not matter much to us because we know that what happens here is not the issue, but what will happen here after. We may be buried or not buried. Many of our members have just got mixed like that. Nobody knew where they died. Nobody buried them. We conducted their burials without their corpses. But as Christians, we know that these things are bound to happen on the earth. And so, brethren, it doesn't matter at all. What matters is that on the resurrection morning, on our Easter day, we are going to come through with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus, our Lord and Master, told us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, and I quote, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. They brought the Boko Haram against us. They brought the Iswat against us. They brought the El Shabaab against us. They brought the bandits. They brought the El Qaedas and all kinds of devilish people to destroy Christianity in Nigeria thinking that by killing us and destroying our churches, they've done the ultimate. But unfortunately, they don't know that we'll have our glorious Easter. Hallelujah. Brethren, the hymn writer says, the strife is over. The battle is done. The victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Hallelujah. And so, in this Easter, as we celebrate the Easter of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we call on all Christians all over the world who are passing this terrible persecution brought about by the fanatical and ethnic Muslims all over the world to rejoice and thank God that we have Easter. And most importantly, let us hold our faith in Christ no matter what we experience in the world today, no matter what we experience in Nigeria today, no matter what we experience in our homes, in our villages, in our communities, in our states, so that we will not miss our soon coming Easter. We are not unaware that these things will happen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ already informed us that they would happen. If we read John chapter 16, verse 33. And let us read it. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Did you hear that? I have told you all this that you may have peace in me. But hear the next sentence. Here on the earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Jesus said this over 2,000 years ago. That in the world here, we are going to have many trials, many persecutions, many bitter experiences, many sorrows. We will have reason to weep. We will have reason to cry. And people will rejoice. People take pleasure in our crying, in our sorrow, in our mourning, in our bitterness. 
But look at the next sentence there. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Our Lord conquered the world and gave us victory. So no matter what is happening today, no matter what they are doing today, they are just wasting their time because the world and his leader, Satan the devil, have been conquered by our master and the Lord Jesus Christ many, many years ago. I also want us, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Forgive them and pray for them. Let us pray for our persecutors. Let us pray for them. Let us not hold grudges against them. Because if we do, we will be on the same level with them. We listened to the Good Friday story. And we saw what Jesus passed through. But at the end of everything, the first word he said on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The Boko Harams may not know what they are doing. The East Wabs in Nigeria may not know what they are doing. The bandits may not know what they are doing. The kidnappers may not know what they are doing. Know that they don't know that they are killing people. But they may not know the reason why they are doing it. And so we have to pray for them. Jesus also died for them. And so we must not hate them. We must not develop hatred for them. We must not hold grudges against them. Rather, we should pray for them just as our Lord prayed for them. Let all Christians in Nigeria also pray for the forthcoming general election in Nigeria come 2023. We pray that this election will be free, fair, and peaceful, and that God's chosen people will be elected. We pray that God's will will be done in our 2003 election so that the suffering will be reduced. We urge every Christian who is up to 18 years or above who has not gotten permanent voter's card, PBC, to go and get it. Remember, we cannot win the election with prayers without voting. We cannot win the election by propaganda without voting. We cannot win the election by telling stories without voting. We cannot win by crying and complaining without voting. We cannot win this election by sending all kinds of messages on WhatsApp on Facebook, on Twitter, on SMS, or other electronic media without having a PBC and going out to vote on the election day. Our power to determine the winner is our PBC. And if you love this nation, if you love Christians, if you want Christians to win in the coming election, if you want the reign of God to begin in Nigeria, we must get PBC and vote in a Christian to rule this country. Not just somebody who goes to church, but somebody we know that he knows God and he serves God. And it has the heart of Christ. And so we also call on real Christians 
to go out and compete. Let us not leave the politics for them, as we usually say. Who are the dead? We claim that politics is dirty. But oh, do you know that if we leave it for them, the dirty people will win and they will make dirty policies. And of course, we cannot run away from our country. We will stay in the dirty politics, in the dirty policies they have made, just as we're experiencing this time. We believe that with the electronic voting and transmission that have been proposed this time, rigging of our election will be reduced to its barest minimum. So we're trusting God for the best come 2023. Best. I sound this warning. We are not waiting for election. We are waiting for our Easter. We are waiting for our resurrection. We are waiting on when we shall embrace the Lord. We are waiting when we are going to tell the good story to our master, the Lord, how we overcame the war. And so, hold your faith and thank God that the earth is done. Thank you and God bless you. Amen.